All right, guys, Wilson with CJS Dayton coming at you with a Coleman gauge demo. Here we've got a little mini lab set up here. We've got the Coleman gauge. We have our company sponsored Pepto-Bismol in the tube. Down here, we've got a little air compressor here. Already pressurized it to 12 PSI because the stem that we are testing on is very small and it doesn't need that much. Down here, we do have the actual rig itself. You're gonna have one of these to try it on. Right here, we've got a ball valve. That ball valve remains closed while the rest of the system prior to it is pressurized because when you open it, and when you open it, open it slowly. The air will come into here and it will seep out this cap, which is intentionally leaking. Yours will be as well. The purpose for this is to show what a passing test is going to look like and what a failing test is going to look like without having to have many variables to change. Coming back up to the Coleman gauge here, we're looking at this pink goop here. You see how it sits in the tube. You wanna make sure that you have it marked. We're gonna call these a benchmark, just for the sake of testing. It's very easy to do. All you need to do is take a dry erase marker. I recommend those because you can easily get rid of the markings without doing anything permanent to the tubing. It's nice and soft, so it's not gonna damage it. And you can tell just you can just tell where everything's at. It's nice and easy. All right, well, apparently this marker is drier than Popeye's biscuits, but you can still see where everything's at. I'd like to take a moment to thank our OM Cindy for providing us with a filming location. I'll be sure to ask her for permission when she comes back from her vacation. So coming up here to these valves. You can see we've got both of them in the horizontal position. This is test mode. When you go to pressurize this, you want to make sure that both valves are in the open position. As you can see, it reset our goop to have it exposed to atmosphere. So I will be reapplying our dry erase marker. That's a thing. I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's worth noting, though, when you are in test mode, don't touch this silver cylinder right here is very temperature sensitive. Your hand will mess with those readings. So we're gonna go ahead and close this back up. Give it a second to settle because it may or may not move. Just depends on how much the temperature is varying in the location that you are currently testing. Uh, certain things will trigger the goop to move in test mode. Um, all of them are temperature based. So if you're touching this or if this is touching the wall and the wall is an exterior wall like this one, which as you can see, I've got it kind of pulled away. Or if you're near an AC vent and the AC happens to kick on, things like that, things like that will cause your readings to change. So looks like we're not gonna have any movement here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remark it. All right, much better, way easier to see. As you can see, valve number one, which these are numbered, it is engraved into there. So valve number one, valve number two, valve number one is closed, valve number two is open, that is test mode. Now you can see we've got our benchmarks right here, and as it sits, we have no movement. Your inspectors are gonna wanna see this, no movement lasts for a period of time each inspector may ask you for a different time period. In my personal experience, they typically only need to see about five minutes or so. But your experience may be different. Coming down here to the testing rig, we've got air pressure up to the ball valve, which is our passing test. As you can see, it did not move past our benchmarks. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to open this very gently. And as you could see, that caused it to move. The air pressure moving caused it to move. If you see any movement like that, as you can see how it's climbing up one side or the other, and it won't may, it may be it may be that severe, it may not be that severe. But if you see any movement past your benchmarks whatsoever, you do have a failed test. Closing the rig once more. We're going to wait for it to settle. 
And as you can see, all movement stopped. We already know that there is no leak in the testing system prior to the ball valve. So we don't need to re-benchmark it in this case. Now, if you do have a failed test in the field, you're, you're gonna have to reschedule the appointment. So there's no, no point in re-benchmarking it or anything like that. But that's really all there is to the operation of a calming gauge. It's very simple, very straightforward, very to the point. Once again, I will go over, I will repeat if I you did say it before, I'm just gonna make sure that I go over it. When you pressurize this system, you want both of these valves to be open. That's gonna make sure that your Pepto-Bismol isn't shooting off into the void. You wanna make sure that you close this valve to put it into test mode. And that's how you operate. Again, I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning of the video or not. ADHD is real. We have, we'll screw these right here. When the system is unpressurized, without pressure, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Let's go ahead and pop that bad boy off because it's way easier than that one on this particular Coleman gauge. That one, pop that one off. Couple drops, no more. Just a couple of drops. Anyways, that's really all there is to it. Short, sweet, to the point. Hope I didn't bore you guys too much. Anyways, good luck and have fun.